Good evening. It's speech o'clock. Three years after, a passionate and divisive referendum campaign, the United Kingdom is still coming to terms with the decision to leave the European Union. A cloud looms over British society. The calamitous Brexit vote has exacerbated cultural and political tensions, and as Britons Wait to see who will succeed Theresa May as their third Prime Minister since 2016. We must ask the question, is the Leave campaign's vision of London as a untethered, laissez-faire Singapore on Thames still achievable? Tonight, two guests will attempt to answer that very question. Ben O'Brien and Alan Resnick. Each guest will give a short speech on the topic in front of them. And after each speech, you, the audience, will be given the chance to respond directly to them. Once both speeches have finished, you will be asked to vote and to choose the winner of tonight's speech o'clock. Now, as is customary, we will begin in reverse alphabetical order based on last names. And Alan Resnick will be our first speaker of the night. Please welcome him. start off by being perfectly clear. I have never been to Singapore. I know almost nothing about Singapore. So when Robbie asks the question, can London be a Singapore on Thames? I answer honestly and directly. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Robbie suggested that I watch a couple travel documentaries about Singapore to prepare. I heard what he said, but I didn't watch the documentaries. Can London be a Singapore on Thames? Thames. The Thames River. That's a river in London. London, England. And I have been to London. I have been there and I do feel qualified to talk about that. I'm happy to do it. I went to London for a few days last year but I was very sick the whole time and I mostly stayed in my hotel room. I did not visit the British Museum. I did not visit the Portrait Gallery. I did not stroll in Hyde Park and I did not go to the Natural History Museum or the Victoria and Albert Museum. According to Robbie, they're right across the street from one another. I can't say for sure if he's right. I just don't know. This 
is my experience of London. I was sick, and I slept a lot. Maybe the same could be said of the politicians there in whatever they call their capital building. They're sick, and they're sleeping. Maybe that is something that I could say to sound smart if I knew anything about British politics. But I do not. I really, really don't. Hmm. Can London be a Singapore on Thames? Singapore is apparently a city that is also a country. Hmm. How interesting. How strange. How unique. I've never been to Singapore, but I have been to the Vatican. I went there once in college. Vatican City. Vatican City is a city that is also a country. Huh. Hmm. So interesting. Wow. So, so, when Robbie asks me, can London be like Singapore, it kind of feels like he's also asking me, can London be like Vatican City? It also kind of feels like he's telling me, yes, London can, in fact, be like Vatican City. But why? Why is Robbie telling me that? Out of all the things that Robbie could say to me, why, why that? Why not? Hi, Alan. How are you? How's the family? What's your cat been doing? No, Robbie says this thing about the Vatican City. Well, Robbie, challenge accepted. I understand. So, so, so let me get this straight. Is the mayor of Singapore like the Pope? Is that what you're trying to say? Is the mayor like the president? Hmm. I don't know, but I do know that the United Kingdom has a prime minister. But hold on, because there's also a mayor of London. And then there's that queen. All hail the queen. I have to assume that this is all somehow related to international business or banking or something like that, because there's a lot of that going on in London, and guess what? There's a lot of that going on in Singapore, too. You can figure that out from the very first page of Google results. <clears throat> so that makes me think this. Aren't they already uh, kind of doing the same thing? Why are we spending so much time talking about two places that are basically just the same place? Okay, I'm getting, half I'm, I hear the bell. Half speech. Alan, this is your half speech break. Uh, how do you think you're doing? Uh, I think I'm doing incredibly well. I have a very passionate speech, and I know that it's resonating with the viewers, so I'm definitely going to win. Alan, I notice that you're staying uh, very still. Very, it seems like you're 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 very tense and and, and tight. You're very close to your, your yourself. Your your arms are down by your sides. Your arms are kind of close in. I think you you could maybe get your point across more if you moved your arms out and about. Uh, yes, Robbie. That, that I well, it's interesting because I am doing that on purpose. I have been doing everything I've been doing because it is such a serious speech, I wanted to be uh, serious in my body language. But I will try to take your note and move and be big. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alan, I just want you to, to think about uh, one uh, last thing, which is that uh, this, uh, this jacket um, seems a little cheap. And so if you ever come back to Speech O'Clock, I just want you to think about how you could wear maybe a, a nicer jacket. You could go to a men's warehouse or, you know, something. This seems very... Um, sort of bought at the last minute. So uh, we just, you know, those things do matter when, when, we're, when we're thinking about the quality of the speeches uh, at Speech O'Clock. So just something to consider. Uh, thank you very much. I do respect you, and I will get a nicer suit because I will be back. Good luck to you, Al. Can London be a Singapore on Thames? The biggest question that I have about Singapore is this. Where is it? Where is Singapore? I looked on a map where I assumed that it would be and it wasn't there. I could have spent more time trying to figure out where it was, but I didn't want to. Robbie said that it was kind of on the coast of Malaysia. Here we go again, Malaysia. Okay, so, so that's another country that for some reason Robbie wants me to think about. Okay, well, no. No thank you. Pass. That's a hard pass from Alan. I will not be doing that because I know where London is. I've been there. 
I've been to London. And I guess I would visit Malaysia if someone were to please pay me to travel there and to put me up in a cool hotel and give me free food. That sounds pretty fun. Why doesn't that kind of thing happen to me more often? Maybe there are some things that I could do to change about myself, to change about my life, to change about the kind of business I do so that I get sent on more cool trips. Here is a list of some places that I would like to visit if it was completely free and at no expense to me. Hawaii, Disney World, Universal Studios, Six Flags. I'd like to visit one of those robot restaurants they have in Tokyo. And last but not least, I'd like to go to Westworld. All I know for sure is this. People everywhere just want three things. Money, food, and love. Singapore, London, Malaysia, money, food, love. Money, food, and love. If the people of London can agree to a Brexit deal that guarantees money, food, and love to all of its citizens, then yes, we have a deal, okay? Because you can't argue with that. You can't argue with love. Because love, love, it's more than just kissing. It's more than just a handshake. It's more than just a slap on the back. It's love. It's sex. It's the whole thing, folks. And when you have sex, when you finally have sex, deep, deep sex, when you finally make that ultimate commitment to that ultimate act, guess what? You get married. You get married and you have kids. You get old and you die. And that's life, baby. That's life. That's life in London. That's life in Singapore. And yeah, that's life in the goddamn U.S. of A. Sex. Marriage. Children. Death. Brexit can't take that away from anybody. Sex. Marriage. Children. Death. That's yours to keep, honey. You keep that. You put that in a little box. You get a special key for that box. You lock it. You put it in a place in your house people don't go and you throw that key away because that's yours to keep. So in conclusion, London and Singapore are literally the same place. Can London be Singapore on Thames? Um, hmm. Yeah, absolutely, because they literally already are. That's my time. Thank you so much. Alan, uh, such an interesting speech, and I, 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 I wa wanted to know if I, I could get the conversation going with this. Um, with the uh, possibility of the uh, British crashing out of the European Union without a deal, are you at all concerned with the uh, security or lacks of security if the Irish backstop is not secured? Uh, no, absolutely not. That is not a concern that I have about the Brexit deal. And if anyone in, in London is listening or watching me speak right now, I just want you to know that everything's going to be okay and there's not going to be any problems from now on and your life will be good and I'm going to win this contest. Well, really, because I, th I do think that there is a, uh, a very real concern that the uh, latent militarism on the Republican and uh, Unionist side in Northern Ireland could be sort of uh, irritated by uh, a, a, a no-deal Brexit. Right, right, right. Absolutely. I do know exactly what you mean by that, but I just think it's not a concern of mine or of yours or any of the viewers of Speech O'Clock. Uh, uh, we have a, a, a caller on the line. Uh, caller, you're on the air with uh, Speech O'Clock. How are you tonight? How are you? I am good. Yeah, how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing very well. Uh, I wanted to know how you uh, felt Alan, Alan did tonight. Honestly, I think that he did amazing. I think that he was right to the point. Mm. He said what he wanted to say. He said what he wanted that to he say. He was clear and on point, and he used his body language perfectly. Right. Uh, and now, and now, uh, caller, if you would, uh, where do you think he got this uh, jacket? Um, uh, Walmart. <laughs> 
maybe. Is that right? Walmart? That seems like a, a, a very uh, interesting place to get a, a jacket. And Walmart is a very interesting place to talk about when we're talking about uh, free trade. Don't you think? Yeah, I do think so, because Walmart is one of the most profitable companies in the world. Most most po most popular, one of the most profitable uh, uh, companies in the world. Alan, uh, do you always shop at Walmart? Uh, no, I rarely, I almost never shop at Walmart, and this is one of the nicest items of clothing that I do own. Thank you for your call, because you did like me. Yeah, I, 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 Caller, uh, just one last question. Do you shop at Walmart? Uh, caller, you're on the air with Speech O'Clock. We, um, we actually lost our last caller. We have a new caller. Caller, how are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very good. Uh, did you uh, watch Alan's speech? Did you have a, a reaction to it of any kind? I did. I, I thought he was crisp with his delivery. Crisp delivery. And I think crisp delivery, definitely. And I thought he was, you know, his most authentic self. Mm. It really it really came across in his presentation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good, good job there, Alan. Uh, Caller, are you worried at all about the sectarian tensions uh, in Northern Ireland? Uh, I'm definitely more worried about other things. Okay, Alan, uh, what, what do you think about that? Uh, well, I think this is one of the best callers you've probably ever had on Speech O'Clock, and that they are right to worry about other things, because there's much bigger fish to fry everywhere. Absolutely. Caller, what kind of uh, stuff do you, do, you, do you worry about? Um, I worry about climate change. Climate change. I worry about economic disparity. I don't worry about Ireland enough, probably. Do you think that Alan could have moved his arms more? His arms more? You could always move your arms more. Uh, thank you, uh, I, thank I you for your call. Thank you for your call. That was no a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful criticism of Alan's. Uh, you know, you, you do look rather stiff, and um, when you when you when you give a speech like that and you don't uh, move your arms out and up. It uh, can make people feel like uh, you're, you're afraid and, and weak. So uh, thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you for your speech. Uh, our, uh, please please uh, step aside so that we can bring up our next speaker of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ben O'Brien. Singapore, London, two cities separated by oceans and lands, yet tied together by history and circumstance, and a dream, my dream. Last night I dreamt of ships, big ships and little ships, everywhere, as far as the horizon. They came and went, an endless parade of ships, low in the water, Heavy on the tide, the tide is capital. It goes in and out. It's also water. Okay, picture this. I'm at a very nice restaurant. There are candles on the table. It's not important, but I lit them with my eyes. I am waiting for my love. A very tall waiter with pale skin black hair and a widow's peak approaches my table. He looks like a vampire that shops at JCPenney. He's horrifying. When I woke up, I drew him. Excuse me, I say to the waiter, how deep is this cup? He responds, this cup is, is deep as the megaport of Singapore. Uh-oh, I point to my plate, which is also filled with water. Excuse me, I say to the waiter, but how deep is this plate? He responds again, the plate is as deep 
as the Thames. Peter turns and leaves. He bumps into me and knocks my drink out of my hand. This pisses me off, but I deal with it on my own. I look at the clock wall. I look <laughs> I look at the clock on the wall. <sighs> Sorry. The clock the clock face becomes a video of for, former British Prime Minister David Cameron. He is giving his resignation speech shortly after losing the Brexit vote. I take the remote control that is on the table. In this restaurant all the tables have remote controls on them. There's a lot of people in the restaurant. I should have described all this sooner. David Cameron. I used the remote to turn up the volume. David, David Cameron's voice is strained and is, he's, and he's sad. I, I love this country and I feel honored to have served it and I will do everything I can to help this great country succeed. I can only do Cockney. He pauses for a moment and he starts taking his coat and his shirt off. His wife gives him the thumbs up. She's pleased. This is all happening in the clock. Half speech, half speech, half speech, half speech. Half speech. Ben O'Brien, how, how do you feel? How are you feeling like you're doing right I now? I would feel better, uh, but Al Alan, right before I went on, he said a very mean thing to me, but I'm I'm coming back from it. I'm doing Cutthroat, it. Alan, cutthroat Resnick, cutthroat Resnick. I, I, under I, I understand completely. Oh uh, yeah, um, and you also, you took my water before I came on. So. Well, I, I, I was thirsty and it, it's getting kind of hot. In, it's getting kind of hot in here, don't you think? Yes. Well, uh, I, I, I was wondering, uh, Ben, um, you uh, seem to kind of hold your arms uh, close to your sides. You're not moving your arms very much. And I wondered also, um, uh, where did you get this jacket? Because it, this doesn't look like a, a Walmart jacket like what Alan had on. It's a nice tailored suit that I got from a store that makes suits for that tailors suits. Is it like a men's warehouse type of situation? No, it's like like that times infinity. Warehouse, men's warehouse times infinity. That seems uh, uh, seems like a great place. Do they have a one of those like uh, loyalty clubs? No, you just come in and you spend, you drop like a ten grand on a ja on a jacket and you peace out. Well, uh, you seem to be uh, sort of well on your way to uh, finishing the speech, so we will uh, let you get on with that. Good luck, Ben. Thanks. David's David Cameron's skin is pale and hairless and thick, as thick as green pork. Big D, that's what I call him. He, he wants to show everyone his new tattoo. It's a tattoo of worldwide shipping lanes that connect the world's biggest commercial ports. <laughs> Long Beach, you, yeah, that's there. Durban, Hong Kong, you got it. Freeport, Rotterdam, you heard of it. Also, of course, number one on the list, everyone's waiting to hear me say these words, Singapore. He's, he spins around to show off the back piece. It's sick. All of the lines come together on a drawing of Great Britain, and they converge on a single point within Great Britain, which is London, the city of Great Britain. Big D, David Cameron says, check, check this shit out, mate. This is all happening on the clock. Brexit party leader N Nigel Farage is my waiter now. He's smoking a cigarette. It seems like he's probably not c cool to do that in such a nice restaurant with TV remotes on, on all the tables. But I don't want to make the situation uncomfortable, so I pretend that smoking is cool. W would you like to order anything, Ben? The sound of my name coming out of Nigel Farage's mouth is very cool. I can believe he, I can't, I can't believe he knows my name. What do you recommend I order? I haven't been able to look at the menu because I'm also smoke, because I'm also smoking, I ask. I have just the thing, Ben. Hearing my name again is very cool. Not Nigel, fair. It places a massive stack of paperwork on the table. I look at the top sheet. It's a free trade agreement with the European Union, and there's more where that came. Oh, I'm sorry. And there's and there's more where that came from, Ben. Very cool. Not uh, Nigel Farage points to a line of serving carts. Each one is stacked with a free trade agreements with India, Brazil, South Africa, and the United States. You can start with this. You can start with this one and then work your way down the line. I shake my head. I'm sorry, this is too much, Nige. 
I was hoping for an appetizer. He blows, he blows smoke in my face. I cough violently and Nigel Farage disappears along with all the paperwork. This is a dream. Suddenly, Lee Kuan Yew, the chief architect of modern Singapore, sits down. Bam! I'm not going to do an accent for him, but I say, it's very nice to meet you, I say. He takes a deep breath. Take my hand, he says. I take his hand and he leads me to a window. What do you see, he asks. This is what I see. In the center of a big bushy forest, there's a massive stone statue recreation of my own head, flanked by two balled up fists, as if I'm asking the question, what you thinking about? There are bright fires in my eyes. The flames are many different colors, rapidly changing. There are dozens of people scrambling over my head, carving details and smoothing imperfections. I look at Lee Kuan Yew, it looks awesome, I say. He shakes his head. You haven't even seen the best part? Lee Kuan Yew opens the window and shouts at the workers. Hey everyone, Ben is here. Make the mouth of his head open. I want to stay cool, but I was really hoping this would happen. A couple of the workers scramble around the back of my statue head. There's a sound like a massive light switch being flipped, and then my stone mouth starts to shake and open. Torches ignited in a lighted tunnel leading down like, a la like in Aladdin. I want to go into it. Lee Kuan Yew looks at me, gesturing at the open mouth. What are you waiting for? I look back at my table. The candles are melted down to stumps. <sighs> I can't, I say. I'm waiting for my love. Lee Kuan Yew puts his hands on my face and he looks deep into my eyes. He says, you're waiting in the wrong place. Without notice... I am walking deep into my own mouth. The tunnel is wide and tall. It is comforting. This is my dream. Brexit. Ben, uh, what an interesting uh, a speech that you just gave. Thanks, Robbie. How do you uh, how do you feel like you did? I feel like I did uh, as well as I could in the in the circumstances that I was in of the of the uh, best friend insult thing that I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, do we we have a, a caller waiting on the line. All right, uh, caller, you you are on the air with speech o'clock. Yes. Hello. Hi, caller. You're on the air with Speech O'Clock. Uh, did you did you happen to see how Ben how uh, Ben's speech went? I did. I really like the use of the visuals. I think that really made it clear what he was trying to say. Mm. Very you. visual speech, Ben. I, I think, uh, and and I noticed that you did move your arms more uh, towards the end there. Yeah, I I thought about it and I used my brain to do it and I started thinking about my arms moving and then they started moving. Uh, caller, can I can I ask you a quick question? Uh, now, now that you've heard Ben's speech, um, do you feel like uh, unilateral uh, trade agreements are 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 perhaps more uh, successful than ones that are uh, sort of negotiated with lots of different culture uh, countries at the same time? I would have to think so. I know that um, I'm concerned about it, mm. and I think that uh, Ben's dream really put it into perspective absolutely absolutely and 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 such a nice jacket i, I really i really appreciate uh ben putting the effort oh, yeah. into uh wearing a nice jacket to speech o'clock absolutely much appreciated absolutely well thank you for your call we'll be uh right back and we will uh have our contest for the winner of tonight's speech o'clock
Ladies and gentlemen, these are your uh, speech o'clock speakers. Uh, please call in. Tell us who you think won uh, tonight's speech o'clock. You can also uh, vote. You can chat in, in the vote uh, for the person that you feel like is the most likely, most, most deserving of the winner of tonight's speech o'clock. You can vote more than one time. You can just keep typing in the name Ben or Alan, the name that you like, into the chat over and over and over. Keep typing the name. Keep hitting enter. We do count every vote. Caller, you're on the line with speech o'clock. Who do you think uh, won tonight? Um... I, th I think Ben did really well. Ben, uh, vote for uh, vote for Ben. What did you What did you like about Ben's speech? Um, the way he presented it was just very um. It was very articulate. Very and articulate, like very clear, very professional. Wouldn't you say? Yes, very. Yeah. He didn't sort of uh, he didn't sort of like pander or sort of beat around the bush like so, uh, other people. I, I won't I won't mention their names. No, of course not. Of unlike course. those other people. Well, uh, thank thank you so. much. For your, for your call. Uh, ne next up, uh, caller, you're on the air with uh, Speech O'Clock. We are voting for tonight's uh, winner of uh, tonight's Speech O'Clock. Uh, who do you think won, Ben or Alan? Uh, ben. Ben, another vote for Ben. Ben, uh, that, that must be uh, feeling pretty good right now. I got to say, it does feel good as it was Alan that said that hor that really mean, uh, uncomfortable thing to me that made me kind of crumple my paper up and get mm. mad before and, the, and, and Alan, this this must feel like a little bit of a sting a, a little bit of a rebuke uh coming coming from the audience uh tonight i do i do feel like some of the people who are calling in are actually lying and i did what i said to ben was not that mean i just said that i hope that he got whatever was coming that's to him not good true. or bad that's not what you said that is, that's true uh good thank you for your call uh, another you vote said. for ben uh caller you're on the air with speech o'clock we're uh looking for tonight's winner of speech o'clock Ben or Big Alan? Ben O'Brien. Ben O'Brien, another vote for Ben. Alan, that is uh, your the, the the trench is being dug. Uh, it's it's getting deeper and deeper. Uh, ben, you are you are uh, rushing over the top. You it, it must be like you've just come up for air. It feels really good. It feels really really good. I feel good. Caller, what did you like about uh, Ben's speech versus uh, the other speech? I did not like Ben's speech. I thought it was a load of bollocks, if you ask me. I thought, oh, a load of bollocks. A load of bollocks. Just a vote for Alan. A vote for, a vote for Alan at the last, yeah, this, at the last is, what second? Alan's a switcheroo. Uh, this is a vote for Alan. He had some internal inconsistencies in his speech. A lot of inconsistencies. But, Alan, Alan Ben's is, is being, is seen, is being seen as someone. a lot less clear. A, 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 and he was just rambling. He was a oh, fool. He needs ben. to get out of this. He needs to shut down. He needs to return that suit. Shut it down. I hope return he has the suit, his receipt. Get a cheaper suit. Uh, try, try less hard, but be consistent. But there was, as long as you're consistent, but, it doesn't matter if you're a slob, right? But that's a vote for me. How could one yep. person like it? Thank and you for, someone thank you for your call. Doesn't. Don't forget, you can you can type in the name of the person that you want to win uh, tonight's speech o'clock as many as many times as you want. It could be Ben or uh, somebody else. Uh, oh. Caller, you're on the air with speech o'clock. We're looking for the winner. It's either Ben or Alan. Hi. Yeah. Um. I was at first. I was really feeling Alan's speech. Mm. I thank you so much. Know, yeah. Yeah. Thank I you. Know nothing about Singapore, but um, then during Ben's speech, I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was what he was saying or just how cool his jacket looked. It's a great jacket. It's a great. It's a, with Ben. Yeah. So, so you're saying that you started out uh, wanting to vote for Alan Resnick's speech, but you, you switched the vote to Ben. It's a tailored jacket. It costs ten thousand dollars. Thank you. It's a, it's a tailored yeah. jacket. A tailored jacket. That was that, a vote along with this, this, this is a lesson. This is a tailored jacket. This is right. a this is a lesson. This is a lesson that. It, appearances do matter when you when you are speaking to the public. Uh, thank you for your call. We got what? Uh, we have another call. Another uh, coming through. We got another vote for either Ben or Alan. Caller, you're on the air with speech o'clock. Uh, we or we're looking for votes for Ben or Alan. Uh, Alan has, has has got a severe uh, uh, deficit in votes, uh, so we're maybe uh, looking for a little bit of salvation for him gonna put in a vote for alan just because i kind of feel bad for him at this point at this point, at this point it does good. feel pretty bad to be alan, alan but i know no, 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 no. that is a vote for me and that does count for me and i do appreciate any votes for me so thank you caller caller what specifically uh do you, did you like about alan's speech and if you could just like name a very specific part of the speech that really spoke to you i like the i like the part where alan talked about his trip to london and talked about vatican city randomly yeah thank you, so, so vatican you know that part. wasn't part of the question so i'm wondering i'm wondering if there was something about the, the 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 how he answered the question that i posed that maybe made you think that his was the better answer i'm not sure i felt like his was maybe more on topic compared to ben's ben's was more mm. of an abstract story interesting well, uh, that is that is a vote for for, for Alan. Uh, we don't have to count every vote, but uh, thank you for your call. Uh, callers, you're on the. Uh, we are up. I, I I've just gotten the notice that we did. We have gotten uh, our speech o'clock winner. The uh, the speech o'clock assistants are now bringing me 
the name of our uh, winner of tonight's speech o'clock. And I, uh, I, you know, we, we've had a lot of uh, call-in votes for Ben, but there could be a number of votes for Alan in the chat. We'll see how uh, Alan has uh, done. And uh, the winner tonight is Ben. It's Ben O'Brien. Ben O'Brien is our speech o'clock winner, and uh, we are, are so uh, proud of him. And uh, Ben, would you like to say a, few, a couple of words? Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you and that you, guys, you can do anything even when your best friend before the show tells you that you look like Mr. Potato Head with just the eyebrows put on. You can do anything and you can uh, go to any lengths in speech with, your, with math speaking and the format with the paper and, and you writing it down. And then and it started just with writing down the idea in, he in head with the paper pan pans and... Um, all right. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Alan. Uh, may, uh, you know, maybe next time, you know, if just uh, dress better and maybe we'll have you on again. And uh, that was our, our speech o'clock winner. Thank you. We have time for one more caller. I'm sad that Alan didn't win because he shops at Walmart and I find him to be more relatable. Caller, thank you for your input. But the reason that you're here at this moment is a very important purpose. Do you know what that is? No, I do not. Caller, you get to, dis to determine what the topic of next speech o'clock will be. How does that feel? Wow, I had no idea that you're gonna put that kind of responsibility on me. <laughs> it's up to you. What do you think it should be? Um, Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 3, uh, let's sort of build on that a little bit. Maybe we could sort of uh, generalize that a little bit more, build that out, maybe sort of violence in video games? Um, sure. Violence in the media? Violence in video games. Violence in video games. Caller, what's your name? Julia. Sylvia? Thank you. Thank you. Next time on Speech O'Clock, we will discuss violence in video games. Thank you. Until next time, speech you, speech you later.